All right, welcome back. We are going to do a little bit of a side agenda. So there are some extra formulas you might want to copy down. And by might, I mean you definitely need this information. So you need to know the length of a major axis is 2 times A. The length of a minor axis is 2 times B. Or A can be the 1 half times the length of your major, blah, blah, blah. But how do you calculate the length of that focal? So we know A and B are associated with major and minor. But C is your focal length or that distance between your foci points. So again, 2C or 1 half times the distance. How do I know my distance formula? Great, we know this information. And why are these relevant? Well, we're about to move into, if I'm given a characteristic solve backwards, you will need to use the distance formula or the midpoint formulas, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that you are expected to know. You are expected to know the distance formula. You are not expected to know this. This will be provided. Same with these two up top will be provided. So stuff like that is provided. But the distance formula and your midpoint formula, you need to memorize. Okay, so moving on. Uh, what about the center? We can use the midpoint formula. Here it is again. Again, this is one. Memorize. Okay, so here's visual proof of all that I just told you. So your... Um, your major axis is associated with A, so the distance from your vertex to the center is A, or the vertex to the other vertex is 2A. Your minor axis is B, so the distance from your co-vertex to the center is B, or the co-vertex to the co-vertex is 2B. Your distance from the center to the focus is called the focal length. From focus to focus is 2C, from center to focus is C. Proof. Cool. So now let's actually write some equations given characteristics. So if I'm given this ellipse, uh, I'm told it's an ellipse. That's important information. I'm told that I have a major axis from 5, negative 2 to negative 1, negative 2, and a minor axis from 2, comma 0 to 2, negative 4. Because they tell us, in essence, they tell us our vertices and our covertices. Since they tell us that I know a lot of information, I can use the distance formula to calculate A and B. I can use the midpoint formula to calculate the center. There's a lot that I can do here. I can also use the repeated values to figure out whether it's horizontal or vertical. So what repeats in the major axis, my Y values repeat. So if I look down here, at the major axis, it must be horizontal because that's the only one whose vertex is a repeated value. It doesn't have a plus or minus. Over here, it's got a plus or minus. So unless A is zero, which it probably isn't because it's a division of zero that can't exist. Since A is not zero, then it's not going to be vertical. So now we know that it must be horizontal. We could have also confirmed it from our minor axis. Our minor axis has a repeated value of our x value. And so if I come over here to my um, co-vertices, we can see h clearly repeats. So let's plug in this information. I now know my vertices and my co-vertices. Technically, that's all I know besides the fact that it's an ellipse. But since I know that the vertex has to do with the major axis, which has to do with the a value, I could calculate that. I could also calculate my b value for my minor axis and my co-vertices. I can also assume my H and K values based off of the repeated value. Since this repeats, this must be K. Since this repeats, this must be H. So we got that information. So now I know my center. And I can use the distance formula to calculate my A value. I could have found the distance between 5, comma, negative 2 and negative 1, negative 2. Or I could have plotted those and found the distance uh, was equal to 6 and divide by 2 and you get uh, your A value from there. Or we can create formulas. H plus A must be equal to 5 or H plus A must be equal to negative 1 or H minus A must be equal to 5 or H minus A must be equal to negative 1. Either way, H plus or minus A must be 5 or negative 1. And that comes from relating our formula back to the answer we have. So I can get some formulas for uh, A, or I could just solve with my H value being 2, since 2 is a known value, plug that in, and I know that A is 3. So again, either I use the distance formula, found the distance to be equal to 6, and divide by 2 to get 3, or use some logical puzzle solving like we did with parabolas. Either one works. Same here, and we went ahead and solved it and we got negative two. So now I know my A and my B. If I know my A and my B, I get to solve for my C. So plug it in. Don't forget to solve for the C. Oh, I see why we didn't solve for C. 
All it wanted us to do was write the equation. It didn't need us to graph it. Since we can write the equation using A, B, H, and K, we don't ever need to solve for C. So we're done. That's it. Let's do one more uh, with me, and then I think the third one is for you. Write an equation for an ellipse given vertices 3, negative 4, 3, 6, and foci at 3, 4, 3, negative 2. So, again, what were we given? We were given the vertex and the foci. Um, let's first start by, does anything, you know, vertex is our major axis, co-vertex is our minor. So what do we notice? If vertex has a repeated K, uh, X value or H value, then where does it repeat? Does it repeat here? No, there's a plus or minus, but it surely repeats here. So we are probably vertical. Cool. So let's go ahead and plug what we know in. Plug that in. Plug this one in. And any information that repeated, well, my H is. So I know my H must be 3. I can get formulas for the rest, but I don't know K, I don't know A, and I don't know C. So I can set up some formulas. Mm. I'm still left with variables. Here's where the distance formula must be used. We should have written this down already. Since we know vertex points, we can talk about the major axis. So we're going to solve for A. We're going to use our distance formula with our vertex points. So we're going to take in uh, our vertex points. Ta-da. We solve it. We solve it. And 2A must be equal to 10, so or the square root plus or minus 10. So then we end up with A is equal to plus or minus 5. Ta-da! So now that I know A is plus or minus 5, I... Ah, so we could end up with K plus or minus 5. And we end up, we realized that the way we had set it up wasn't quite correct, but that's just because we were making assumptions about our plus or minus. So what this is saying is this should have said K minus A is equal to negative 4 and K plus A is equal to 6, but we would have never known that. Um, so here we go. We got our information. We now know that K is 1. And if K is 1, we can go back and solve for C. So I could have used my foci, its distance, and divided by 2. Or since I've already got it set up, I know A, I know K, I can go ahead and solve for C. It wants to know the total equation. Uh, yeah, some recall. It wants to know the total equation. And since we know A and we know C, unfortunately, to write the equation, we still need B. So we're going to plug that into that bottom formula, finish our solve, and we end up with B being plus or minus 4. I can throw that into the formula, and ta-da, we are done. And that's all it wanted. Ta-da! All right. Just a recall. This is important information. You need this information. Now it's your opportunity to answer a question on Moodle.